Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and it's by user AKN Enolis. My 19 female pregnant sister-in-law 26 female is cold and short with me, but kind to everyone else. My sister is a lesbian and married her wife a year ago. They received financial support from my parents, they're wealthy and generous. They both have good jobs and as such have decided to have a baby. Currently, her wife is about 6 months pregnant and the two of them are visiting for the holidays. I'm in college so I don't see them very often. Yes, my parents give me financial support as well, everything is fair and square, but I'm really excited about their baby. My sister and her wife had been dating since their senior year of college and were friends since childhood before that. I'm 7 years younger so I was kind of left out of the loop. I never really truly knew my sister's wife until they got married and even then I was swamped with my first year of college so I didn't really ever get to know her. I was really excited though for this trip since we'd get some one-on-one -on -one time together. Our parents live about 2 hours away from my sister and her wife and I flew in from across the country. We're all staying with our parents who are not yet retired. My flight got in yesterday late at night so I slept in. My parents went to work and my sister went to go do some shopping. My sister-in-law stayed in with me but I didn't realize she was around until she came downstairs while I was making lunch. She's pretty obviously pregnant and I haven't seen her since her wedding so I was really excited to see her. She was not. I said hi and went to hug her and she backed away. I apologized and she just kind of looked at me weirdly and went looking through the fridge. I tried to make small talk with her so I asked when she was due. She gave me a really weird look like I'd asked what her cup size was and then just said 3 months and kept making her food. I said I was really excited to have a niece or nephew then asked if she wanted a boy or girl. She sighed really loudly, said she didn't care and moved on. My sister had mentioned that her wife had PTSD due to a previous pregnancy so I worried that might have been it. I tried to shift the subject and asked how her work was. She set her knife down really loudly, stared at me for 30 seconds then said fine and went into the dining room without saying anything else. Throughout the day I kept just trying to interact with her, offered to get her a drink while I was in the room, she just muttered no. Asked what she was watching, you wouldn't know it, it was the Simpsons. Said I was really glad she was spending the holidays with us, a very begrudging yeah. Really, I thought this must just be how she is. Then my parents and sister came home and she was super cheery and nice to them. My dad was asking if they had names picked out and she just wouldn't stop chattering on. My sister said she wanted a family name and her wife insisted on a unique name. My mom pointed out that my name, Anais, isn't very common, but it's also a family name, same as my grandmother, and they should consider it. I said I wouldn't mind having a niece with my same name and my sister was really enthusiastic about it. Her wife gave me a death glare, I just ended up getting the silent treatment. At dinner I asked if she would pass the potatoes and she didn't listen. I repeated myself, she ignored me. And then my sister told her I had asked for her to pass the potatoes. Suddenly she was all bubbly and giggling, guess I didn't hear. What should I do? Should I tell my sister or directly challenge her? I have a very positive relationship with my parents and my sister and I do want to be really involved with my niece or nephew so I really don't want to go 100% no contact or anything. How do I try to resolve this or at least get over this? Well OP, from the way that you tell us that she treats you, she definitely has something against you. I mean if she was bad with people in general and overly awkward or whatever then she would be like that with your parents as well, right? But with them she can't stop talking, she just talks and talks and talks apparently but with you, you just get one word answers. Silent stares and death glares. Maybe you did something to her that you weren't aware, maybe you said some weird comment at some point, somewhere and she just didn't like it and has never let it go? Maybe you should ask your sister if she knows about anything that you could have done that your sister-in-law wouldn't have liked or took offense to and that's why she doesn't talk to you. And if you don't want to get your sister involved because this is between you and your sister-in-law then talk to her directly and be like, have I ever offended you in any way? What have I done that you don't like me? Please let me know, at least I know what to apologize for. As usual I would say that communication is key. 
But if she won't talk to you at all and won't answer the question as to why she's angry at you, then you do need to go to your sister to get this all cleared out. And what do you guys think? What would you do if you were in OP's shoes? Let me know in the comments section and now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Deleted says, what the actual F? I would talk about this privately with your parents and your sister because honestly, it sounds like there is a big underlying issue. Have you ever met her before, even just briefly? And OP responds, I used to see her a lot when I was younger, but again, I didn't really get involved in their plans. The longest conversation we had was when our family took her with us camping and I kept bugging her to give me a fry after we went to McDonald's and I ran out of Happy Meal fries. I was 11 at the time so I can't imagine that got me on her crap list. My sister would also cancel plans with me to hang out with her. Never the other way around so I never interfered with their relationship. Mega Parsecular says, Sister, you noticed that strange moment at dinner with the silence from your wife when I addressed her? I was hoping it was a one-off, but she's actually been pointedly cold and short with me since arriving. It's important to me to be part of your life and part of your support system. I love you a lot, so I'm asking you if you know of any reason why I'm feeling very dismissed by her behavior. That's what I'd say. She was pointedly, publicly rude to you. If she's rude to you again, before or after you address it with your sister, call her on it kindly. Is there an issue here I'm unaware of? Ask it gently but with confidence. This is your home and your family and you don't deserve her treatment, pregnant or not. If she denies it, you say, I'm glad to hear that. I'd hate for any issues in our family seeing as we all love you. She's being a brat. Inevitable Blame says, you'll never know unless you reach out to your sister, but here's an uncomfortable possibility. Just because she is your sister's wife doesn't mean she will ever be nice to you or kind to you or sisterly with you. Which is a crying shame because you sound quite nice and like you've been trying. So absent some backstory where you drop kicked her dog off a balcony, who knows why she's like this to you. All you can do is be polite and kind to her at all times, but it is very clear she doesn't want to be close with you. You are entitled to her being polite to you though, so for that reason alone, if you are close with your sister, just ask her in person if there's any reason you may have offended or hurt her wife. It may not fix anything, but it should put her on notice for things like passing you the freaking potatoes. How petty of her. Additional information from OP's comments. My sister and I were really close. She babysat me when I was little so our parents could work and we had a really inseparable bond. Think of her as a human golden retriever. She needs to be liked and I was like a built-in friend to her. And she enjoyed the company. My sister had a really good childhood and teen years. She had lots of friends and her need to be liked never made her a doormat. It made her good at coming up with compromises, good at working through issues with friends and really persistent in getting what she wants. She's just a happy-go-lucky kind of person who really wants people to like her and enjoy her company because they have no reason not to. Obviously people were mean to her because people are mean, but she was unaffected. She'd do what she could, but if they let her be, she'd let them be. We sincerely have a very good relationship. If she has a problem with me, she's very upfront about it because she doesn't like to have those bad feelings fester. The last time she told me she said she had an issue was when I tagged my mom in a Facebook post for her Zodiac but not her. She literally called me saying she wasn't mad, she just wanted to know why I didn't think it fit her. It's a little bit petty but I appreciate that she tries to address all her issues so we don't have those why are you mad at me moments. Now, my sister-in-law wasn't really in my sister's friend group in high school. My sister was part of the popular kids and my sister-in-law was one of the weird art kids. And I remember them arguing about whether or not my sister's friends were good influences on her. My sister's friends were kind of mean and would use my sister to get information on the people they didn't like because she was friendly with them. It would make sense that she's still concerned about people taking advantage of her, but I'm not sure if I can see any recent instances where that's been applied. For those of you asking why I mentioned my parents' wealth, I felt like the financial aspect was fairly important to mention. There is a level of attachment that my sister has to my parents due to their money. She's a really nice person, I wouldn't consider her superficial, but she does maintain expectations of my parents partially because they give her money. Some people have drawn the gold digger connection and while I didn't initially, I felt it was important to include it because of that bond. Sorry if I came as superficial. Now, there is one thing I might be able to think of in terms of her wedding. 
It was initially scheduled on the day of my finals. This was prior to invitations being produced, mailed, just their idea. So I called my sister to tell her I either wouldn't be able to make it or the date would have to be changed. She was really upset about it because she and her wife had wanted a winter wedding. The date seemed perfect for them, etc. I said they didn't have to sacrifice the winter aspect, just maybe move it a day back. There was kind of a big fight and I can assume my sister-in-law got in on it. But as I said before, my sister is the kind of person who likes to be liked and she didn't want to be mad at me. So we worked through it. Her wedding ended up being the day after my finals, which I was grateful for and there's no resentment or hard feelings. My sister actually laughs at herself for being kind of an ass. Her choice quote from that time was, You just don't have to go, it's just a test. I was my sister's maid of honor and I didn't see much of my sister-in-law prior to the wedding. She'd gotten food poisoning from her bachelorette party so she was kind of holed up for the majority of the pre-wedding stuff. During the reception, I made a toast, talked about my sister and her wife's friendship, how we've just been waiting for the two of them to get married, they're a match made in heaven, etc, etc. She teared up, gave me a big hug and said she was excited to be my sister-in-law. I wanted to talk more with her, but some relatives wanted to ask me why I chose the college I did, so I went to talk to them. I'm probably going to bring this up with my sister either today or tomorrow, it all depends on what my sister-in-law is up to. Opie's edit update as of this morning. So we all had breakfast together. I sat across from my sister between my parents, with my sister-in-law kitty cornered to me. My sister-in-law actually spoke to me, but it wasn't all that positive. She asked if I was seeing anyone, in kind of a snarky tone. I said no, the school was really busy, I just didn't have the time, etc. She responded, well, not everyone finds someone. My sister tried changing the subject, asking my parents whether or not they'd gone to their winter home yet. They're those rich people. My sister-in-law was so nice to them. She was saying what a gorgeous house it is, how grateful she was to have been able to take vacation there with my sister last month. My mom is easily flattered, so once my sister-in-law got started, she started gushing about her and it was just a mush fest. After breakfast, I offered to go take our dogs for a walk. When I came back, my parents had left with my sister to go shopping again and my sister-in-law was the only one home. She asked me how I was liking college and I said I was liking it a lot. I major in pre-dental, started talking about it a bit and she rolled her eyes. I apologized for oversharing and she said, No, it's fine, you just have a problem with reading the room, I guess. Then she walked away. When my sister comes home, I'm definitely going to tell her about it. Alright, well Community Advice empowered OP to talk to her sister and it seems like that's what she's going to do. So let's move on with the update to see how this story ends. So I didn't get the chance to talk to my sister. When my parents came back from shopping with my sister, my mom started saying how she had the perfect onesie for her granddaughter. Before my sister-in-law could start gushing, I asked what my mom meant. She asked if I hadn't heard I'd be having a niece and I replied I hadn't. My sister said it was weird because she'd asked her wife to tell me once they'd gotten the ultrasound. Her wife had zero excuses and had the most deer in the headlights reaction. There was something that just sort of snapped and I started crying. I felt kind of spoiled and horrible for it, so I apologized and went upstairs with the dogs. My parents came upstairs and my mom went to go ask if I was okay and my sister and her wife started shouting downstairs. My mom basically said that my sister-in-law doesn't like me and that it wasn't really my fault. She's just bad with people she doesn't know and took it out on me inappropriately. And yes, my sister-in-law was still pissed about the wedding date thing, which just made it worse. I felt really crappy and just, just like really bad? Part of it wasn't my fault, but part of it was my fault. And apparently, my sister knew about both issues beforehand and had given my sister-in-law directions to try and get along with me. They were still shouting downstairs and I was kind of bordering on a meltdown, so I asked my mom if we could take the dogs for another walk. We went out the back and when we came home, my sister had left the house to cool down and her wife was upstairs. I spent most of the rest of the day downstairs until my sister came home. She had obviously been crying and was in a bad mood. My mom took her into the kitchen to try and calm her down so I kept sitting in the living room. I felt like a bratty little kid again. Like I genuinely felt like I effed up my sister's marriage and probably ruined our relationship in the process too. Everything just felt awful and when my sister came out of the kitchen she didn't even look at me, just went storming back upstairs. 
Her wife started yelling first and they were fighting for a while before it got quieter upstairs. My mom, dad and I went out for dinner and when we came home my sister-in-law was waiting for us. My sister-in-law apologized to me saying she had been petty and rude and that the wedding date thing had been a non-issue. I said it was okay if she was upset about the wedding thing but I wish she had let me know. She said it wasn't that easy since my sister would basically take a bullet for me and it had caused them a big fight before their wedding. I said I had no idea and that I was sorry to be the source of that tension and I just wanted to be a good sister-in-law myself and be a good aunt. My sister-in-law got angry and said I had ruined the opportunity for the first one and she wasn't banking on the second one. Then she stormed upstairs and she and my sister got into another big fight. I felt awful. The bad feelings manifested physically and I spent most of the night throwing up while my sister and her wife fought. My mom was really kind to stay up with me and my dad tried to get my sister and her wife to get off each other's back. I specifically heard my sister-in-law shouting, Who would you jump in front of a train for, me or her? And my sister responded without missing a beat, My sister, no questions asked. They got quieter after that and my sister-in-law started up screaming about an hour later saying, I let all my siblings die for you. My sister slept on the couch and the two of us went out for breakfast in the morning. She basically said that after my sister-in-law gives birth, she and my sister were going to separate. They will try counseling prior to the birth and afterward too, but if things weren't getting better, they'd be divorcing. I said that it shouldn't have gotten that far and I was sorry for pushing both of them. My sister said that my sister-in-law does this to all of my sister's friends and they've been fighting often. But she clarified that the way she treated me was a deal breaker. She said it might have sounded sad but I was her best friend from birth and she wouldn't let me not feel welcome like that. I felt really guilty and started crying again. She kept saying she wanted it this way, their relationship was broken as is, etc. It's been tense and awkward ever since. My sister-in-law won't look at me or speak to me and I've given up. My sister has been by my side a lot and has amped up the good sister behavior 10 times. I feel like crap. Not a great update but there we are. Well OP, from what I understand, you are not fully to blame for their breakup. Apparently your sister-in-law has a lot of issues and that's weight on both of them. I mean, what kind of a BS incendiary question is that? Who would you jump in front of a train for? That's a hypothetical that it's impossible to answer properly. Hopefully counseling does work out for them and your sister-in-law can get over whatever kind of insecurity she has regarding your sister or else they're going to be planning co-parenting, which kind of sucks for your future niece. In any case, I wish you and your sister all the best in the future. Take care OP and thank you for sharing. Now, I know the thumbnail says one story video, but I didn't want to end the video on this mood. So let's move on to a mood changer from Petty Revenge. And it's by user Wildast Guess. Who knew changing coffee would cause such carnage? When I was a student, I took temp jobs through the summer holidays to make ends meet and I worked through an employment agency. I, male 19, was placed in an office full of catty women way older than me, who made it clear from the outset that they didn't want me there and were rude and isolated me. One of my jobs was to buy the coffee and load the coffee machine each morning and afternoon as necessary. Revenge was simple. For an entire week I loaded decaf coffee and watched them slump, get snappy with caffeine withdrawal and generally suffer a little bit. The next week I loaded Lava Jabba by Taylors instead and watched them run around like monkeys on crack. It was joyous. Opie's edit. I've since learned that some people have quite the digestive reaction to caffeine. I imagine some were constipated in week one and some had the world fall out of their ass in week two. And that did the trick for me. That changed my mood. Thank you Opie so much for sharing. It must have been hilarious. And it's that time that we've reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's stories. I really did enjoy reading them to you. So if you did, then don't be shy and go ahead and give the video a like. And don't forget to subscribe or even share this video with people that you might think will enjoy my storytelling. Also, if you have the time, go down to the video description and check out all the links I have for you. From our Discord community to my channel merch. And finally, I'd like to say thank you for watching. It really means a lot to me that you enjoy my videos. And having said all that, I'll see you guys in the next video.